Huh. Ready? Okay. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Oh, so much for the great. I'm going to let it go. Just let it go. Come on, man. <laughs> hey, that's what happens when your studio's in the house. <laughs> happens. I thought the intro was cool, though. I did like that. All righty. Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Drone Therapy, the Bucket List Boys. Teach me FPV. And tonight, we are joined by one of my original drone therapy panelists and cohorts, Mr. John Coopy. And I will pass it to John. And John, you can pass it to our other co-hosts. John. Uh, thank you guys for having me. Uh, I am. I do want to say that I am by no means an FPV racing drone expert, but I am going to try to help answer some questions and uh, talk FPV with you guys. Thank you guys for having me. Also, I've got a little bit of a cold that I'm getting over, so that's why my voice is not so good, so bear with me there. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and pass it to Ron now. Well, thank you, John, uh, and thank you for joining us tonight and lending us some of your, I, I don't want to say expertise, that she's said not expert, but some of your knowledge. Uh, of F FPV uh, racing drones and FPV flying in general, which is uh, probably above a, a couple levels of the rest of the panel here. So um, I'm glad to be here tonight. It's going to be a little bit of a different show tonight. We're going to have like a, a topic that uh, we're going to get into and we're going to take a lot of questions and uh, stuff from the, uh, the chat room and we're not going to have so much, you know, regular news features this time. So on that note, I'm going to pass it over to Bill H from sunny Florida. Thanks Ron. Um, it, yeah. And lately it has been sunny, which is nice. We've had, had some nicer weather here. So that's a good thing. It actually got up into the eighties today. Uh, one of the things that I've always been fascinated with about FPVs, I know, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to throw DJI in the mix and I know everybody's going to say like, here we go. You're talking DJI. Well, DJI makes a lot of components and, and I, a lot of people have said, you know, when are they coming out? And they, that question has been asked ad nauseum. When are you guys coming out with an FPV and, and, and doing something with that? And, um, they, they really should. I, I think that would be just a market that would just, you know, they have such a incredible share of the market as is. And I'm looking forward you know, I'd be like Bill, you know, okay, I got it to buy. Now what do I do? Kind of thing. So I'm looking forward to learning about this as well. It's always good to expand your knowledge base. They look like fun. They look like, it looks like a blast. And um, I'm here, definitely here to learn and um, send it right back to Mr. Bill. All right. And I thank you very much. And if you gentlemen and ladies and gentlemen, hope, well, maybe there's a lady. Anyway, if you people see in the chat, you'll notice that Brian Lee FPV said, yo, he's in the house. I just dropped him a hammer and he is the creator of my, of my learning materials. And like I said, I know the thing about it is, is I, I want to do it so bad. And he keeps telling me you need to, <laughs> he said, no DJI, but I want to fly so bad. But John was pointing out to me that my backyard is just not enough space for me to really practice in. So I'm going to try to, of course, we've got like a foot of snow. Out there. So I'm um, yeah, if you're like, a little bit, okay. Say a week or so, we didn't cry. Well, just one minute. But other than that, uh, y'all check out Brian's channel. Make sure that you check out everybody's channel. I want to say hi to Floyd, Brian, Ron, Brian. Uh, old guy in a drone. Everybody check him out. I see Thomas O'Sullivan. I need to scroll up. Thomas O'Sullivan, uh, Ted, Tan, Floyd, everybody that's here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I guess so where will be the best place to start? Um, the, the, the programming languages, like what is, what is the difference in free sky, fly sky? What are all those protocols? Is that what it is? Yeah, they're all diff they're all different uh, radio protocols. So uh, this is this is just my opinion. Uh, 
Uh -huh. But in uh, Fly Sky tends to be a little more lower end. It's a it's a simpler radio, but it's more on the lower end. It's cheaper. Um, the Free Sky radio is what most people use. People are using either Free Sky QX7 or the Tyrannus X90 Plus, which is what I have sitting here. Yeah. Yeah. I've been talking about a Tyrannus for like, well, of course, you know how long. I've been talking to John for probably, what, three years now about getting getting a race drone, but not actually getting a race drone. <laughs> so finally, you know, Brian was like, okay, if I, if I build this, all I want you to do is promise me that you're going to, oh, and now Nemo's in the house. G's in the house. I gotta give him a hammer too, because he's another one of my FBP guy. FBP guy. Bill, you were asking a good question the other day um, to me. Okay. And I, I didn't actually reply to it because I didn't know how to answer it. You were asking for some goggles for someone who is farsighted, right. and the challenge with that is that you kind of need a goggle that you can either have uh, corrective lenses or can fit with your glasses in there and that was a really good question i tried to see if i could find a goggle that would really work with glasses and i found one but it's pretty expensive unfortunately <laughs> it's like 100 it's like 180 bucks it's called the fxt viper yeah but it is considered it. to be the most uh comfortable fpv goggle that you can get for racing drones with and if you're still going to use your glasses. Okay. Did you, okay. Look in the, if, okay. In the chat, you'll see Gary was saying fat shark. What are they? Diopters. Right. That's, so let me show you yeah. this because I've got these sitting right here. Right. So Bill, it was trying to go for box goggles. Right. To start with, cause it's going to be cheaper. So right. these are my fat shark goggles. You see this little lens in here. I'm going to show you this piece. Okay. This wait, wait, is wait, a wait, corrective wait. lens. Hang on. See that up here. Uh, there we go. All right. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah, you see that? That's a little corrective lens. Now, for my eyes, because I am very, very nearsighted, I need negative two correction. Okay. So, for someone who's farsighted, I'm not really sure that you're going to have a problem if you buy fat sharks because the way I can just. It's like a minimal focus, right? Well, the way I can describe looking into fat shark goggles is imagine you're sitting in a movie theater and you're sitting in a little bit way in the back, uh -huh. okay? And you're kind of looking at the projector. That's what it's like wearing these. So people who are farsighted, a lot of them can just put their face in these and they don't need any correction at all. Right. So these might not need any correction. But because uh, <laughs> you're farsighted, any box goggle is going to be a really big problem for you. Yeah. Unless you get a corrective uh, lens, which is expensive. So you're in a tough spot. You're in a little bit of a tough spot when it comes to that. But yeah, if, you, if that person is right, uh, what's his name here? Was, yeah, Nemo was, he was wanting to know Nemo how yours right. were. He'd been wanting to try them. And Oh, how are my goggles? Oh, my bus is going to go over. <sighs> Oh. Okay, how are my goggles? So my goggles are actually real. Uh, I like these. These are the Dominator V3. They're about 300 bucks. Oh, hello. I have entered the chat. That's my girlfriend, Crystal. Yeah. She supports my hobby Hi. very much. Hi, Crystal. Hello. Hi, Crystal. They're all saying hello. Okay. Um, so these goggles are my Dominator v Oh, she's touching. They show them Woody? She's touching. No, I haven't showed them Woody yet. <laughs> We will later. So yeah, these right. goggles uh, are my Dominator V3s. They cost 300, 300 bucks. No, they're not done. They cost 300 bucks for just the goggles. Uh, and sadly, you still can't fly even after you've purchased these. Then you need a receiver. So inside both the sides here, this is where you would install a receiver. Uh -huh. And my receiver is the LaForge receiver, and that's going to run you about like 80 bucks. He's saying then, you need the, then you need the antennas, which are going to run you probably another like 20 to 50 what are bucks. HDOs? So HDOs are a new goggle from Fat Shark. And uh, supposedly they look really, really nice, but I've never 
I've never used them. They use an OLED display. That's what he's saying. It's what Nemo's saying. He's like, uh, HDOs are so much better. Just got a pair. It's a different world. Uh, so really? What, it's that much different, huh? He's bringing it. He's like, yeah, I'll show you mine. What is this? He's like, like I'm going to whip it out. Ain't nobody else got one like it. It's really, really hard for, for people to convey uh, like reviewers who put out videos about the HDOs, they say you pretty much have to have them on your face to see the difference. One reviewer took it to uh, their flying field and they just asked random pilots, put this on, what do you think? And give an instant reaction. And some people were like, yeah, this is okay. And other people were like, wow, this is amazing. Nemo's pointing out the rapid fire. Yeah, so the Immersion RC rapid fire, if you guys want to look look that up, Immersion RC rapid fire, that is the new hot uh, receiver module for Fat Shark goggles. It's 150 bucks, so it's going to cost quite a bit, but it is uh, the, the best the best of the best that you can get. At the I think moment. I think we're getting a little rich here now. We're getting we're building an FPV <laughs> wish list instead of getting me started. <laughs> this is this is this is the problem. This gets really really expensive when you look at the goggles. Like the whole goggle setup cost is going to end up costing more than drones. Expensive is a dirty word. <laughs> My wife can hear this. They say buy <laughs> two, buy twice. <laughs> Bill's wife. Yeah, so I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm going to just yeah. throw in a quick link in, to Immersion RC here for the rapid fire for you guys who oh, want to take a look Brian, at it. Yeah, Brian came back. Okay, so what I'm trying to figure out is like, okay, Brian, he, he set it up so it was like for him to fly. He doesn't fly with horizon mode. He doesn't fly with stabilized mode. He just has full acro with his pins installed and takes off. And see, the thing about it is, is, I don't really understand. I know that PIDs are kind of uh, some kind of like parameters that you program into it that tell it how it's going to behave in 3D space. That's about all I get out of it. I, I, so I don't know anything else. So even if I was to, you know, install Betaflight on my computer and, and go in. All and right. So I don't know. Right, what so basically do. what a PID is, when people say PID, it stands for proportional integral and derivative and it's basically it tells the flight controller how fast the motor should spin in order to uh keep the quad going at uh, in your desired direction more or less and so the, the pid controller automatically corrects the errors in the uh gyro sensing so that way you can fly. I'm really explaining this in a terrible way, but I will say this. You really don't have to worry too much about PID tuning today anymore for, for most builds because beta flight right out of the box will fly beautifully with the stock PIDs for the majority of people, unless you're running something very specific. Um, I wouldn't be, I, I don't know. Did Brian tune the PIDs on yours? I mean, if he did, I'm guessing he might have maybe changed the derivative a little bit or he might have changed the rates, but. Uh, that was weird. Let's see. Nemo, I was just going up to the chat here. Nemo says he has True D in his Dominators. I actually almost went with True D, believe it or not. But at the time, the True D module was frying Fetch our goggles. So I had to make a choice. Do I get a true D and hope it doesn't fry my goggles, or do I go with the forge? So I <laughs> you ended are up speaking with, a different ended up with language, forge. man. Y'all lost me 15 minutes ago. I'm like, I'm looking at the chat and I'm listening to you. I'm looking at the chat and I'm like, what? I'm just trying to get it in the air, man. <laughs> yeah, the goggles are the worst. The goggles are, are going to be the worst. The goggles are going to, I've easily probably, I've spent more on the goggles than I have. The drones. Oh, wow. Okay, I, I get I get what you're saying now. But okay, like I said, the tiny hawk's on the way. The only thing that sucks is I sent it parcel air mail, so I'm waiting for the in between. I don't know where it's at. I do know that they've already made the sticker in St. Louis, so I know that they've oh, already got okay. the so it's coming. It should be should be pretty should be on the way there. Yeah, so it's just a matter of it getting there. And then, like I said, I can start out with those. 
and I've, I've got because remember I, I had that little what was it the, the little pepper or whatever so I can I don't have any trouble flying with the goggles on I thought maybe that since I have minor motion sickness that it might bother me but it doesn't I don't know why but so that worked fine for me so I've got the tiny hop coming I'm going to try with it and so maybe there's more instruction I would I would think because it's you you still tune a tiny hop too right so I would think that there would be some instruction on and of more of what to do. I mean, I know that I can install Betaflight. I know I can hook it up to the drone, but I need to understand more what I'm going to do before I jump in and start flipping switches. So here's the here's the really sad thing is that most Betafly drones, they'll come to you in a box and they'll have barely any instructions. They just kind of expect that people who are buying this stuff will just understand it and get it done. Emacs tends to be a lot better about this than most others because there's always some sort of manual to go with it. Um, and you probably find it online, but even some of their documentation can be very, very brief because they just figure that the kind of person buying this is just going to know exactly what to do. But you bought the RTF version, right? The ready to fly. Yeah. So then yours should be all, all bound and ready to go. You just need to figure out the goggles. And because you're looking for goggles with glasses. <sighs> but yeah, we've right. even been offered to test the, the what was it, FXT or whatever. They'd offered to let us try them. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Okay, I want to do a quick, Art has jumped in. I can see Sunshine Cooper. Of course, I had Sid Nemo's here. Birdman is in the That's house. Raymond Millwood is in the house. I want to please make sure everybody gets to know each other. We're all a friendly bunch. Please share and share a like. And please also understand that if we subscribe to your channel, we'll do the best to watch as many of your videos as we possibly can. But we'll, we got like, I, I've got just minimal subscribers, like 600. There's no way I could watch all those videos in a day, but I'll do my best. So please don't get mad at us if we don't get to yours in the first couple of days or weeks or whatever. Because, and if y'all have a subject about FPV or anything, questions that you would like to ask, John is checking his food and stuff right at the moment. And anybody yes. in chat would always be happy to answer some questions too. I saw also that Eric the Red had jumped in here. He was listening for a little while while he was doing some things. So uh, with that being said, Bill or Ron, do you have any questions? Yes, I, I do have a question, and probably John can probably answer this. John, is, is there some type of, and, and I hate to use the term because everybody talks about, you know, like FPV for dummies. Is there any kind of book out there or <laughs> is there anything out there for somebody who's interested and wants to get started and learn more about it? Or is it just like go out to YouTube and see what you can find? So um, I can't remember, but I think there's a book by Joshua Bardwell. Um, there might be something like that out there. But for the most part, the majority of information, you're going to find it online. And w one of the reasons for that is because this world is changing constantly. What's good right now is, is maybe not going to be what you want to be using even three months from now. So most of the resources are online. Some of my favorites are um, fpvknowitall.com. That's Joshua Bardwell's website. He keeps that up to date with um, what soldering iron should you get? What uh, tools should you get? What's, what's his favorite video transmitter? All those things are on there. Um, the best thing to do is to find experts like that and follow them and, and see what they're doing at the time. A book is going to be behind uh, unless it's very, very recent. So I kind of, I, I understand wanting to go to a book, but I would try to just seek the online resources. Project I think there Falcon. is an FPV book out there, but I, I can't remember if Farwell wrote it or not. Project Blue Falcon. Does that, send, does that ring a bell? Project Blue Falcon. Yeah, I, Gary was saying something about, Nemo was saying something about that. Was saying something about Blue Falcon. Mm, cool. <laughs> oh, yes, <please. laughs> What's his name? Dy is Dynamut there? Yes. Oh, all right. I just I just found it. So there is a book. It's from Joshua Bardwell. It's an ebook. I'm gonna link it in the chat for you guys. Um, 
It's called what? Beta Flight Mistakes. Whoa. Everybody makes mistakes with Beta Flight and how to fix them. So that'll teach you a lot about the uh, actual configuration part. The guy passed away? How about sorry, the configuration John. part? I'm I'm sorry. I'm just I pulled up Project Blue Falcon off of YouTube, and yeah, he's and it says he died like a year ago. What? Eric Red says I have never tried Fat Shark type goggles, just box style. So, box versus Fat Shark is like night and day. Believe it or not. Really? Yeah, it is. It's like night and day. At least it was for oh, me. Okay, I, so Brian was saying it was a motorcycle accident. Okay. I just posted his YouTube channel, Project Blue Falcon. Yeah, Project Blue Falcon unfortunately passed away a long time ago. Thank you. Yeah, wow. I, I bet. Yeah, I, I, I know heard. my voice is terrible. <laughs> so what happens? Well, so there won't be any new content, but it's just some, okay. Sub subscribe. Ryan, we're making Parmesan chickens. Ooh, mm -hmm. we what, we had uh, man, already short term memory loss. <laughs> but anyway, we had Sal and pressure style be used for those that use reading glasses. So this is actually what I was telling Bill that if you need reading glasses, ah. <clears throat> um, yeah, Eric, has what they're called. Is that the, what the diopter that, that, right. So there are corrective lenses. There are, but they tend to be for correcting those who are nearsighted with the way fat sharks work. It's like, you're, it's like you're sitting in the very back of a movie theater and you're looking at the projector. So if you can already see far, you probably don't need any correction at all. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling the guys are saying, uh, guys, you all can post links and they'll stay in the and they'll be in the chat for the replay. So all these resources that you're talking about, please throw up the links so that anybody else that might watch this replay in the future can go back through here and in uh, it. And me and the guys were talking beforehand. We'll probably have to do a few of these. So maybe uh, I, I can show you my progress as it goes along. And I just posted something earlier as a joke. We could call it bucket list FPV. <laughs> so, hey, Bill, is, hey Bill, we, oh, sorry, we, we, Bill, we have drone pool in the chat room. Drone pools. A, he's a really good uh, FPV flyer. He's a lot of nice. Uh, yep. Dan, Dan, Dan does a lot of builds. Hey, what's up, Dan? He's done a lot of builds too. Yeah. And yeah, he, he does a lot of builds and he does, puts up a lot of videos. So, Go check out his stuff as well. Hi, honey. What? Oh, she's she's trying to sit in so she doesn't get on cam. Hey, uh, John. Um, I know we've talked a lot about FPV racing drones, but uh, you don't have to just you can't you just ha you don't have to do racing drones. Do FPV? Have you ever just taken you know a, a drone like the Hubson Five Hundred One with that has a five point eight you know system in it and just put your five skyles on and flowing around just. You know, oh. not racing, just flowing around. I mean, it's fun. Oh, oh, sure. I've t I've taken little cameras and whatnot and put them on drones, like yeah. little cameras like this, for example. Those are great for throwing on stuff like the bugs or. And this is like right. one of those all-in-one cameras. It's a video transmitter and a camera, all in one. It's and all in one. You can pretty much just anything that you can attach this thing to. This thing is so light, and yep. these are a dime a dozen. You can probably get you can get these for like ten bucks. And, you know, right. what a lot of people will do is they'll put them on, like, their bugs. And then, yeah, you can use your fat shark goggles to do that to yeah, uh, uh, or any it, kind it, of goggles. Yeah, it's great to fly around just, you know, see if the goggles is on a, you know, again, a non-racing drone. Well, uh, Bill H., have you ever considered getting the uh, DJI goggles? I, I no, hear they're really uh, because, fabulous. Because, you know, Ron, uh, Bill was talking about, you know, for me, I, you know, I, I'm not, I, I generally have a strong stomach, but for stuff like that, I get disoriented. Really. <laughs> I mean, I knew, we, like, I knew we could make it. I knew we, I, see, I told, I, it's like I said, we always talk about DJI <laughs> for the night. I'm, 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 I'm glad you brought DJI that back up, in. though. I'm glad you brought that up. I want to say something. Okay. Uh, he was talking about how he feels like he gets disoriented. The box goggles made me feel nauseous because oh. it's like you're right up against the television screen and all this action is going on around you. Now, if sitting in the back of a movie theater and you've got a whole bunch of action going on, doesn't make you nauseous. Uh, you see that you see the parallel. You see what yeah. I'm trying to say? Like yeah. the box yeah. goggles are so going to be enough to fly with a racer. 
Is what? Okay. Are you going to be able to use even the DJI race goggles to fly a race drone with? You you can, but I would not recommend doing it. I because really you're not recommend too much doing latency, it. you'll crash every two seconds. Right? Well, the DJI race goggles, they actually have a 5.8 gigahertz uh, receiver in them that is completely separate from DJI's OcuSync stuff. So you're you're actually getting a real receiver, but I've seen no real testing of this receiver. Um, I was looking into them the other day for somebody who was planning on buying them because he was getting an Autel Evo. Yeah, we're and he was like, I want to I want to buy DJI red. goggle and uh, uh, I want to have a racing drone too. So I'm thinking about getting these DJI goggles and I go to him. There's almost no point in doing that. Number one. It's not going to work with your Autel. Number two, the 5.8 gigahertz receiver in there only has 12 channels. We're up to 48 channels for our video transmitters these days, which, okay, if you're not flying, if you're only flying by yourself, it's no big deal. But why would you sink almost $500 into DJI Racing Edition goggles when they're going to be so primitive for the racing side? It's just not worth it. Hey, yeah. John, um, Birdman Cruz brought up in the chat room here. He's considering the Fat Shark Recons. Have you, do you know anything about them? They're I've, like a less I've expensive, seen the Fat um, Shark Recons. Fat Sharks. Yeah, the Recon V2. They look really, really nice. I, I have to agree. But you're not going to be able to wear your, wear, wear your glasses with them. If your glasses wear, you, I don't think you'll be able to wear your glasses with them. They're just not big enough. Right. Where the vapors that you talked about about 15 minutes ago, the vapors are pretty comfortable with your glasses is what I've, I've heard. I don't think anybody, nobody in the panel has experience with the vapors, but everybody's interested in them. I'm, I'm very interested in getting them too. Oh, uh, David's you know, in the room. I'm just, hey. I was trying to do some behind the scenes stuff, guys. Sorry. Uh, Cause Nemo said he was at the computer. So I had posted the link in another place for some other people to jump in if they wanted to, that might have some more input. Because as much as much data as we can record and put out there for posterity, like I said, we might do three or four of these, maybe get a big panel going to try to put together. Because like you said, there's not really anything out there for noobs. There's not a way to feed them into this. So even if it's us old farts that put it together, maybe we can put something together that people can follow some steps through and then get into the sport more. So I want to mention too that, by the way, Fat Shark goggles are still a good investment, even if you fly DJI products and you don't have the DJI goggles, because uh, most, for most of them, if you can connect it to HDMI uh, out, the goggles have this little port over here to get video from like your Phantom 4 Pro or what have you. You can't get it from the Mavic 1, though. That is a shame. I've tried, and I can't figure out a solution for that. But for other DJI aircraft, um, you can use Fat Sharks with a cable. I think uh, I've you, I'm sure you guys have seen Ken Heron do it all the time with his Fat Sharks. Yeah, but definitely. But I don't know what what is his. Is he far sighted or near sighted? I guess what near sighted. I don't know. I don't know what he is. I'm very very near sighted. Extremely nearsighted okay so, so like for, so basically i should just take it the way he is and because it, i guess what it is is i'm afraid because you know when i've, I've you know I, when it torques up when you when you you know bind it and it's and you it is activated and it spins up i'm like oh this isn't anything like the little toy drones at all and the slightest little touch man and i'm like if i barely touch it and it's got that much juice what happens if i really throttle it up and i'm like it just it's scaring the, you know out you know i'm like man i'm gonna like i, I want my dachshunds nowhere near it <laughs> <laughs> yeah old well, guy as john said crystal sky and the new mavic controller has hdmi out that's great but the new mavic controller unfortunately does not work with the old Havoc, so people like me are just screwed. Yeah, because it's OcuSync 2, 2.0, right? Yep. Well, um, guess yep. what else? Yep. You can't use accessory coupons to buy the consumer accessory DJI Smart Controller. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, John, 
Have you tried using yes. the uh, jo have you tried using the Litchi app with your um your Mavic One? Um I've done it and you can split the screen and put a just use your phone inside of a pair of cheap um, you know, uh VR goggles and you don't have like, you know, it's not 1080p, but uh you know, it works really well. You can even move your head up and down the adjust the tilt of the camera. You know, that's a good suggestion. I've not touched Leechy you know, because uh, I've heard of bad things that have happened with people using Leechy. And then DJ, I won't warranty you. So I've just pretty much stayed away from it. <laughs> but that's a good suggestion. Yeah, I mean, well, my I, Mavic I, is well yeah. out of warranty. At I was going to say, I, I was told, I was advising Bill H to, to use Leechy to test waypoints. And I've got the thick and his, his, Mavic 2 still under warranty. So, I, yeah. But if you're like, I use an older, older drones, like a Phantom 4 or 1 or whatever. I'm not warranty, anyways. And I've used the thing many times and I've never had an issue with it. With older, with older DJI products, it works better than uh, than the old GJ, DJI Go does. Not I'm Go 4, you. but I'm the gonna, previous I'm Go. Just turn it on and fly it into the camera. I'm warning you. Can we, can we, can we get back? <laughs> Be, be careful, Dude, folks. Don't, don't start that. House. Don't arm that in the house. Don't try this at home. <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying. I'm trying to figure out what to do next because it's killing me. Because I want to be able to do It's like, you know, I, it's kind of like, it's oh, kinda like, like when you, you get, like, oh. okay, Ron, you remember when you got your Bugs 3 Mini and yes. you got it all charged up? And you went outside yes. and you're like, all right, man. And you you tried to test it out a little bit, you know, and you got it kind of got it in low, and then you, you drop it into high, and you're like, oh yeah. And you really let it go, and you're like, oh, that's got some kick to it. And then I'm realizing on the back porch, I'm sitting there going, vr, vr, and I'm like, oh, this is I've not touched this kind of power before. And so right. I'm really wanting to do something, right? I'm just itching. But I know if I get it up like 20 feet, there's a good chance I might fly it into the trees and lose it so i'm like no i need to know something more before I do. <laughs> um oh john i bought the uh the bugs three uh, mini when it was 50 dollars back in the fall and i i got the mjx you know 5.8 megahertz fpv camera i saw it right away so i've flown that F fpv and you know it uh it, it it's a great little drone um it's fun it's fun yeah. i got to fly fpv too but and bill knows what i'm talking about Sometimes it did this thing where, like, it felt like it drops and then it catches. Bill Bill Thomas knows exactly what I'm talking about, and it was the weirdest thing. I I got to fly it when I was at my friend Ryan's house, and uh, Ryan was watching the feed himself, and it did the thing. And he's like, "It did the thing." And I'm like, "Yeah, it did." Now I know what everyone says when they when they talk about it, like doing this dip thing. It's really really weird. Does yours do it? Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, I've never seen a dip. That's weird. Some yeah, of them do, some of them don't. It was like a, a like a power fluctuation, man. You'd be like yeah, be hanging weird. into it and it would just kind of like burp. And you know, and you'd be like, What? Yes. <laughs> yes. And it and it disorients it disorients me for a little bit. Now, but yeah, it's still fun. It's still fun to fly. Now, John, yeah, did, yeah, this this did it John, did this happen at high speed or low speed or it didn't matter? It, it, it doesn't it seems like it doesn't matter. It yeah. seems like it, it didn't matter. I was taking it easy and it was still doing it. I don't I don't know what triggers it or why it happens. But Ryan's is affected and Bill Thomas's was also affected. It's Does really it happen weird. rate rate one and rate two, or just rate two? No, it, it did not it matter. matter. It, yeah, it I, happened to me I, too. I don't, I don't think it matters. I can't remember okay. it mattering. Now you got me interested. Now I want to get it out tomorrow. Well, it and, could uh, be too. That you got like a, a third or fourth generation too, because I got my yeah. I mean, there's out. multiple iterations of them. Yeah, my, mine's a you know, of course. Again, I, I only got mine in like uh, only eleven eleven sale in November from probably Gearbest. Yeah, mine's already a year old. Yeah. So, but I still love flying it. I still love flying the blue bugs. Blue, blue, but yeah. blue, blah, 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 blah. Bill, you know what you should also do? And I think I told you this. You should get on the simulator. Yeah. Definitely. I've, I've, got, I've, simulator. Got it, I've got one like on my phone, but it just, I'm like, it's boring, you know? But it's, see them. I guess part of what it is is where this one is just straight acro, and I'm yeah. I'm not used to because the I've never you know before I've never had experienced where 
just the slightest touch in any direction will only affect that engine <laughs> more so than the others. And I'm like, whoa, yeah. you know, and I'm just not, you know, it makes sense of how it flips and everything and how you manage to do all that stuff. But like I said, when like, you know, you'll barely, when I barely touch it to like, the upper left and the, the upper left motor is the one that's spinning the most and it'll whip that way. And, I'm just like not used to that much sensitivity. Hey, uh, John, uh, Perth West yeah. um, OZRC is in the chat room, and he's mm -hmm. saying the same thing that I am. He, he just bought his mini Bugs Mini recently too, and he doesn't see the dip that you guys are talking about. So you're probably Maybe. definitely right. It's the earlier generation models that that suffer from this. That suffer from that little problem. Yeah, I mean it's not a showstopper, but I, I just every time Bugs Mini Mini comes up in FPV, it pops into my head because. It's so weird. It's such a weird feeling when you're flying it. And you, you notice it more when you're flying FPV. Okay, Dave was saying that he's gonna he's still gotta he's gonna put a cam on it. And so well, oh, so you're not gonna do an all in one? You're gonna put a transmitter with the cam? Mm. Right. So this is why Brian configured it like that. Remember when I was saying that he um <laughs> A lot of people consider Brian doing you a favor by not putting stabilized modes on there because if you fly with stabilized modes to start, then you're going to have to unlearn bad habits. You know, I started with stabilized and it took me a while to get out of that mindset of flying stabilized. Right. Well, I guess so. So I'm just going to have to, like they, like I said, go find a big field somewhere, get it up in the air and then just feel what it feels like. I'll be right back. I'm just going to be in here. I'm oh, no, that's so good. you guys don't hear the noises. Get your food. But I'll be hey, listening uh, the whole time. So you yeah. guys can go ahead. And go ahead. Okay, B Ron, what is your experience with FPV? Oh, Bill Thomas, I just want to uh, go back to the chat room. Eric the Red is in here, and he also just bought the B3 Mini recently, and he doesn't have the um, he doesn't have the glitches either. So, well, that's like I said, we, we, you've probably gotten like like I said, mine's probably a year old. I ordered it like a week after they introduced it and said, you know, you get remember how they give that flash deal where yeah, it, I think I got it for like seventy bucks. Right. First came out. Right. So, so we pretty much solved that, that, that it's that obviously they've had upgraded firmware. And if you buy one now, you probably won't see that. I think that it was probably glitch. an ESC glitch to be honest with you. And they've just put different ESCs in there so yeah. that they don't have that problem. Right. Right. Cause that's what it seemed like to me. Cause it, 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 it was the whole drone would like, just spontaneously all at once just stop and it would just kind of free fall for like a third of a second and then it would fire right back up it was the it's the weirdest thing but it's cool because once you get used to it and you you can you can actually feel when it's about to do it and you can actually freak some people out because they think oh god it's gonna crash and you just kind of laugh and go nah. and you pull up at the last minute yeah <laughs> yeah huh. and, you go, cool. and you just kind of look over and go what do you think it's gonna wreck <laughs> But yeah, well, first couple um, of times it happened to me, I about peed myself. Right. Well, <laughs> I, um, I have this little, uh, I have the little e Sheen M80 here, and it has, you know, the stabilized mode. It has Horizon and Acro, and I'm, I really don't fly Acro, but the Horizon, it's kind of a, a middle ground. It's not as stabilized as stabilized mode, and it's not as, you know, uncontrollable as Acro. Acro. So sometimes, you know. Flying in Horizon mode can kind of somewhat get you ready for um, acro because in Horizon I can't do, it, but I see people do the manual flips just in Horizon mode. It it takes enough stability away that you can manually flip. Yeah. Let's see. Maybe he didn't see that. Let me try that. But no. Uh, so where did, who did you get that from? Uh, this is, uh, I think this is from Gear Best. Is, no, uh, Banggood. Sorry, it's Banggood. It's the e -sheen. It's an M80. Drone DJ posted an article last week about the 10, I don't know, 10 best or 10, 10 best bargain, um, tiny whoops. And this was number two on the list. And you, I got this for like uh, $30 like uh, on a sale around Christmas time. This is the bind and fly. I bind it with my uh, jumper transmitter. And uh, What model jumper is that? That's the uh, the T12 with the Hall gimbals. This runs OpenTX, not Deviation. 
So how much did you pay? For? That's the new one, isn't it? Right. This is around a hundred dollars on this Amazon. Is the brand new one, though. This is the latest model yeah. they put out. Yeah. And I I didn't get it because of that. The other ones were all sold out. Like I wasn't gonna get the the the, the T eight. The, with the D, you know the deviation to haul gimbals, but you couldn't find it without waiting for it to arrive in three months in China. This is the only yeah. one I could have arrive at the house in just a few days. Yeah, uh, and uh, deviation it it's it's pretty. You watch a couple of videos, you'll pick up how the program of deviation. It, it's not that hard. Like I said, just watch uh, about 10, 10 YouTube videos, and you'll be a deviation semi expert, and you'll be able to like find it's, it's your like little whoop. Nemo was saying earlier. Uh, that I, he he learned everything that he did from watching YouTube. Yeah, watch about ten YouTube videos. Let's see. So if you have a simulator on your phone, hook up your control. Oh, you can hook. I can hook up a controller to it. The one with the phone goggles. Oh, oh, okay. So droneography was saying, take the uh, like. Okay, so uh, like I got Oculus goggles. You're saying something like that. And then run, just run the the simulator. Okay, so I will just plug it straight into. But this is the controller that I have. Where would I don't think there's a way to plug it in. Because but because Brian was nice enough to send me this. Because if I said, "Hey, honey, can I have four hundred dollars to go spend on more drones, but not not camera drones anymore, FPV racing drones?" I probably would either be neutered or sleeping on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you want to plug into that controller, Bill? Uh, Droneography was saying, uh, I'm going to stabilize set up to switch for landing. Oh, like, okay. And Eric was suggesting just put stabilize on it. So if I was having issues with it or and I was afraid I was going to mess up or something that I could switch and land it so to keep to keep out of trouble does that make sense I don't that's know. very good advice so say say you're you know i don't know you you've got it too far away from you're an actor and you can't control it you just flip the switch back to stabilize and then you can fly back like the normal toy drone yeah just let just let it sit right there let this switch it to stabilize let it sit there and then get my wits about me again bring it back and well, well, it again. it's not gps it just won't sit there but at least at least so you won't have to like Totally control it. You put back the stabilized mode, you know, just uh, figure out your orientation, bring it back. You know what you should do, Bill? What? You should you should first fly a GPS drone in FPV or whatever. So then you kind of get a got an idea of what's happening with the goggles and with an FPV drone. It won't get away from you. I mean, a GPS drone. It won't get away from you. Like a, if you're flying a GPS drone in F, FPV, you just take your finger, your fingers off the things. And it just stays there. So, you know, you can get your bearing and what's going on. That could be a way to, you know, the first time I flew FPV, it was with a GPS drone. So it was no panic. Okay. So he was saying he had to take off, but he was saying that I can get a cable to plug in somewhere that should be able. Oh, okay. Maybe. Brian, did you, are you still here, Brian? Uh, he might be gone already. Uh, hey, John, I see John's yeah. back. John, do you on? I I have the uh, the jumper TX. This is has Open TX on it. Do you use Open TX? Do you use deviation yes. on your controller? I use I Open TX. Yeah, and Open TX is the more popular one of the two, correct? Oh, Open TX is what you want to be using. Not that deviation is bad or anything, but Open TX is way more popular. Okay, for so, sure. Thanks okay, for so you got that. the right one anyway, Ron. Yeah. So but was, but a, a lot of people love the deviation too. So um, you know, um, but John said one's not better than the other. It's just that uh, I think deviation is going to be better going forward. And Mike was talking about said the SEMA clones. His SEMA clones are acro only with the B core light board. So that's what built, we were talking. John, we were talking okay. about this a couple weeks ago. What Burbank Cruz does is. He he takes these like little whoops that aren't acro flyers, and he he puts a, this B core board in it, and he converts them into acro flyers. And he even does it on larger drones like Seam X5 clones. He puts his B core acro board in, and he he's flying these things in acro. I want to do that at some point too. Yeah, you talk, you guys talked about that, and I think that's really really cool that Bergman does that. Well, Seriously, doesn't Brian, doesn't, really cool. Brian Newsom does that too, doesn't he? But he does it with the, like the little whoops. He just right. That's what that's what's intended for. 
With the what? Wait, Brian Lee is saying that transmitter can't do that. I must have missed that. No, I, I got him. That's fine. I don't. I don't care that it can or can't do that. I'll find a way to learn more. I'm just trying to figure out. Cause man, you know how it is. I'm trying to study to get my 107. Okay, I'm really interested in this. It's you know how it is when you got a drone in the house and you haven't been able to fly it yet. So it's like it's like, and especially with all the extra switches and buttons and knobs, it's like, oh my gosh, you know. So I'm really wanting to experience this. But in the meantime, trying to help my wife with our business here and do things in the home, plus study for 107, plus try to watch some videos here and there, you know, for other and do some other things here and there. It's just kind of a pain. No, yeah, I understand what you mean. I mean, hell, this, this, my build, I'm doing a build. This should have been done weeks ago, but it, it, I can only do it a little bit at a time. This is like, uh, I don't even know anything. Like, you, I still don't remember you have told me about the KV, and I still don't know. I guess maybe it would be simpler to start with what's on here and understanding what they are and how they work. Yeah, I'm sure Brian could probably like tell you so much about it. Yeah, but Brian's in the sticks and he has very, very, very slow internet. So he's like, nah, I don't even think I can get on to, to you know. So he, that's why you see him occasionally say something in the chat because he's yeah, listening. What is, the, what is the KV on those motors on that belt? I'm guessing it's got to be like 2,300 or something. Uh, yep, you're dead right on. Uh, it says AKK. RS-22, US-23, 100KV. Yeah, for a typical, like, 200-millimeter build or 5-inch build that you're going to be running a 4-cell battery, generally the range, <sighs> the range for the KV is between 2,300 to 2,700 if you want your batteries to scream. The sweet spot is around 2,450. <laughs> Brian's giving me, he said, their motors just go fly. He just want me to go out <laughs> He's right. They are. Their motors just go fly. Y'all have fun, no matter what. I'm just trying. Okay, I, I get what you're saying, brother. I really do. I'm just trying to, to, to interject some more into the chat so that we get more involvement. I, I'm going to, I will fly. Trust me, John knows me well enough. Ron knows me well enough. Bill knows me well enough. Oh, yeah. Bird's going to get in the air. That's not going to be an issue. And then the bad thing is, though, is once I figure out how to do it is when I start researching what all else I can add to it, just like John said. So I guess the longer <laughs> it takes me to get there, the better off my marriage is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know what? This is it's good to know everything about it because I've seen people I've seen people hurt themselves with these racing drones because they're not going to have a lot of the safety features that the GPS birds have. You know, you will cut yourself yeah. pretty nasty if you set it up the wrong way or you uh, you know don't don't know what you're doing. It's good that Brian built it built it for you. Yeah. But um, well, he, the first yeah, thing he no, said he, a number on you. before he even sent it to me, he, he sent me this big, big bold letter. He says, "Bill," he said, "Make sure you take the propellers off before you connect it to the computer with Betaflight." And he's one hundred percent right. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, he was like, "Don't, don't." I was like, "Okay, okay, okay," and I really hadn't because you know how it is. Usually, or at least I know how I am. Usually when I get a drone, the first thing I want to do is see how much juice is in the battery and what happens if I plug in the controller and turn it on. Can I get like two minutes of flight out of it? Well, when I figured out how to, to arm it, <laughs> I took it out and put it on the back deck. And I was like, and I, I was trying, I was trying the fingertips to begin with. And I was like, no, 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 no. Okay. So I'm going to try the thumbs. And it, basically what happened was the first time it spun to the right. And I pushed out. And then when I tried to actually get it up in the air, it kind of came back and attacked me. So I said, no, I'm going to go back inside. <laughs> hey, you'll, John, get used, you'll, you'll get used to it in time. 
John, would you recommend uh, somebody uh, to get started with uh, you know racing drones and and acro flying to start with like a like a like a mini whoop first and then work your way up to a bigger three or five inch build? Yeah, it, with some of the brushless whoops that are out there today, yes. Before, when we only had the brushed stuff, you, I've, I've, I always felt like I really couldn't pull off uh, acro moves with the brush stuff because it just wasn't powerful enough. But with stuff like the Mobula 7 and whatnot, you can really do some actual real maneuvers. Uh, but you just got to do them outside. Right. <laughs> that, can't do that stuff inside. I don't fly acro indoors. I keep huh. it on stabilized. Right, but yeah, right. those are great options that uh, hey. I didn't have back then. Right. Okay, so like, like like Ron was bringing up earlier, he's talking about a lot of, of things. He said that his particular drone that he would he had stabilized mode, he had horizon mode, and then he had full acro. So it sounds to me like there's almost a way to kind of to to send you that way. But are you trying to say, John, that it's so difficult to give up what you've had when you had the the you know, the computer aided stuff as opposed to going into acro that you really should just stay full acro from the beginning. Yeah. So when you just fly full acro, for, it's, it's, I guess it's sort of like riding a bike with training wheels, right? After you've rode a bike with training wheels for a while, it's going to take you a little bit to shed the need that you feel to have those training wheels on the bike. Once they're gone, can you do it? Of course. But Obviously, the person who just gets on that bike and starts riding it without the training wheels and gets it all figured out um, is set up better from the get-go. I don't know how, if I'm putting it the right way, if that makes any sense. Oh, no, no. Okay. And, and Brian, I, I love you to death. And, and you're, you're, I, I understand. I'm just asking because... I'm, I'm not trying. I, I'm grateful. I'm probably not going to put anything on this drone. I'm probably going to leave it exactly the way you sent it to me, you know, and then, and I'm going to learn how to fly it that way. I'm just, the reason I'm asking these questions is just for purposes of the show so that we can kind of make, like I was talking about earlier, not, we kind of came up with a plan that we might do a series of these to where we're going to have like, you know, a volume one, a volume two, and then we're going to talk more about, you know, maybe the programming or stuff for like old farts like us. And that's, that's kind of why, because my brain don't remember like it used to, it don't learn like it used to. So I'm going to have to figure out a whole new way for me to be able to comprehend this enough to do it semi safely. So that's, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> hey, hey, Bill, I threw a question out to the chat room. Um, I asked him, I ask everybody out there what their favorite transmitter is that they use. I, I already know, so we'll see what we'll yeah. see what they have to say. QX seven. That's the, uh oh, got number QX7. one right there. <laughs> Wait, let's see, let's see, baby steps. Yeah, I know. That's what that's what Brian told me too, and I just I, I feel like Brian's thinking that I'm trying to, and I, I'm grateful for you more than you have a clue. That's why I keep telling people to go to your channel. Stop taking your videos down so people can see your work, <laughs> but you need to go check his stuff out, man, because he really yeah, Brian, John, guy, John has just well. recently discovered him too, and I've begged him to leave his stuff up. Because he's going, he goes to some unreal places. You see incredible colors and deserts and mountainsides and stuff like you normally don't get to see a lot in FPV. And he's, I'm like, just keep putting that out there. And then our little buddy Joe up in Canada, who loves to fly over the frosty trees in the water, I'm like, he needs to do more of that stuff too. And then we got Nemo, and I'm swear to you, the poop whooping was hilarious. Have you seen poop whooping, John? Po Did you say poop whooping? Yes, he's sitting on the John and oh, he made a YouTube yeah. video. Yes. <laughs> so, yes, I have. Any, I anyway, but he, he wasn't actually making the jump. Time. He was just sitting there making it look like he was. So it was simulated poop whooping. So but anyway, yeah, it was that's why I keep saying this, and, and I don't I don't want you to think that I'm not grateful. Because I'm gonna, this drone will probably stay exactly like it is. I will learn how to fly it, but that's why I've got the little drone coming for me to 
<laughs> learn the other stuff on because Practice it's more on. durable. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. So all I was wanting to do was, like I said, um, come up with some kind of like a, a simple learning tool for people that are interested in it to get into it. Like I've always said before, YouTube is a huge place. There's plenty of room for everybody to do their own drone shows and have special guests on, and we don't need to be stomping on each other. We all need to have each other's backs. And I really and truthfully think that if, if YouTube wasn't bait enough with little pennies and nickels and dimes here and there, that we all would come to realize that if we get together, that we could make them start producing the kind of products that we want to fly and they wouldn't be able just to shove all this stuff down our throat and we have to swallow it because right now they've what, what like gear best and bang good of them have all figured out is they can send out little trickles of these, you know, review drones and stuff. And they know that they're getting a little bit more of what they would consider the cream of the crop, but they're getting it for pennies on the dollar, man. They're getting all these, these hours of work and time and effort out of these people's lives and they're not giving them anything. They're they're writing off the drone that they're giving them in the first place. Absolutely. So acro and FPV will make much more sense and just need to focus on view and trust what you see instead of stabilized muscle memory. Yeah, Eric the Red brought up a good point. So <clears throat> when you fly FPV, you develop muscle memory. It's not just what you're seeing is you learn your quads movements you know you're going to make that flip. You know you're going to make that power loop. And you know exactly how it's going to feel. And you're going to do a lot of it. They're not just what you're seeing, but through just your, your muscle memory. So you're saying... And that's what you will not get if you fly stabilized or in horizon mode. You will have to relearn the muscle memory for whatever moves you're trying oh, yeah, to pull yeah, because I totally... Because uh, me trying to think of... Like uh, like we were talking about, the Bugs 3 Mini actually trying to accelerate and go all the way over for a power loop. And I'm just like, I just don't, would never see that. I could see me cutting the throttle and letting it kind of do flips coming down, but not going all the way over. Yeah, so, Eric yeah. Red says that. So, I mean, that's or that's your, very, your very flips true. are going to be, to me, it would seem as sensitive as this little drone is. In order to do like a flip, it's just going to be so so minute. It's just going to be like a quick little bump and back, and or at least hey, that's what hey, it seems like. I don't know. Hey John, have you ever yeah. uh, done something like you take your Mavic Pro to the field, fly for twenty minutes, and then sit it down and go right to acro flying on one of your racing drones? Is that too much of a switch, or do you just like do you know acro racing one day and you know GPS flying a different day? I've done both on the same day, but typically if I'm gonna do some of my Mavic. I've got some kind of plan for it. Right. Right. Good answer. Okay. Now you can see uh, Manic Magic has come into the room. And I wanted to give another shout out to everybody that was here. David Maxwell. Brian's popped back into the room. Birdman's in the room. Raymond Millwood's in the room. John's in the room. Please, everybody, check out everybody else's channel. I know you've heard that on everybody else. <laughs> Just please check out everybody else's channel because everybody that's in here really does make good stuff. And it's all drone related or film related. And, you know, because that's what drones are really. And truthfully, when you put a camera on it, you're just, it's a flying camera. And it's really right. cool that you can right. do those things. Um, listen, Bill, I, I have a little bit of a, a thing to tell you here, a bit of news. Birdman316 in the chat room, he's flown uh, someday going back to March of 2018 consecutively FPV every day for for almost a year now without a break. I don't know oh if that's some God. kind of record, but uh, Birdman, tell us how many, how many days straight you've flown FPV. Okay. Wait a minute. I, I need the floor for just one second. All right, Bill. I would like to say congratulations to my co-host Ron Brown on 1000 subscribers. Yay, Ron Brown. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, John. Thank you, Bill H. <laughs> it's always awesome when you get past the first 1K. That's really, really cool. Okay. Well, that's real significant for one other reason. That means you're you're now monetized, Ron. You oh yeah, you're monetized. You can get that. You fill out your um 
you can you can message me and I'll, I'll tell you how to do like the Google AdSense if you want to figure that out. But you definitely nice. want to sign up for that because, you know, right now, the way my channel is, I'm getting close to 6,000 subscribers. I get I'm getting roughly about maybe three, four hundred dollars a month now. So, I mean, that's nice. nice. Nothing to nice. sneeze at, you know, right. really I, I, I don't have a thousand subscribers and I don't get any money. And I just see <laughs> that uh, David <laughs> Smith has joined us from the Philippines. And I would like to say, como staca and welcome. And yes, my wife's Filipina. So that's the only reason I know that. Uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> It seems like we've had a good bunch tonight. Uh, we've really been erratic and we've bounced all over the place. There's a lot of good subjects. And I did jot oh, yeah. down some of the different names and stuff that everybody was talking about. Uh, I noticed that we've been on for an hour, but it seems wow. like we got more steam if you all want to keep going. What do you let, the chat room, let the chat room decide if they want an extra few minutes. Well, I, Bill, I know you got to go to work early tomorrow. What yeah, we got a long day today because I had to get up early for my wife's surgery. So I'm gonna I'm gonna part ways with you, gentlemen. Well, we um, thank you very much. Uh, we will get thank you, together, Bill. We'll get together here in a day or two and plan our. Can you can you do like we were talking about and send that group? Oh, yeah, I should be able. Yeah, this yeah, no Super Bowl this weekend. I should be good. So all right, all right. Thank you very much, sir. You have all a right, good. Thank you, gentlemen. Have Bill. a good evening. Very cool. And so well, I guess we'll, okay, I thought my, okay, she grabbed the phone. Cool. Yeah, like I said, we're really happy for Ron getting his thousand. Uh, okay, I'm going to do something. I know we've been on FPV tonight, but Ron, just to kind of maybe give us a little lead in next week, why don't you give us a, a Xeno update and maybe tell us what you, you like about the Xeno right now because I think we may have an opposing opinion next week. So, okay. Good. Good, good. Um, you know, I don't have too many updates. I mean, la last week I talked about they came up with camera firmware 3.4, which improved the photo quality of the 4K camera. And 3.3, the previous one, improved the video quality. So they, they've got the they've got the quality up the sort of where it needs, needs to be. In fact, I've been posting videos of the Femi A3. Uh, yeah, that's the cheaper one, right? The one that costs like 299 and and the video quality, the same thing on there. It kind of looks soft. It doesn't really look, you know, um, what what I would expect. I mean, I know that's only 1080p and not 4K, but um, even comparing the Xeno in in uh, in 1080p now, it doesn't seem to be any better than the Xeno. Probably not as good actually from what I've seen posted. So um, the the big thing that Hux needs to work on now is a flight controller. They've recently upgraded a flight controller like. Something 4.7. I think there's a, uh, a, a number in the front end of that, but um, it still has trouble. It doesn't fly straight. Like it, if you fly to the left, it goes down. If you fly to the right, it goes up. It yaws one way too much. They 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 really need to straighten out that flight controller. Uh, it's still to me. I still wouldn't recommend it to anybody that's not an experienced drone person doesn't mind testing and installing firmware updates all the time. If you're just a first time user, I, I wouldn't recommend the Xeno at, at this point. So um, that's kind of where we're at now. It, it has the hardware is good. It has great potential. Once they get the the software right, it's going to be a good value for for uh, three hundred sixty nine dollars. You know, if you want a four K drone with a three axis gimbal that you know that won't fly like a DJI, but you may, you may get some you know some real good video for out of a toy drone. Well, I just no, wanted to give a quick right. shout out as I saw Ken Heron blew through the chat room. Wanted to say uh, how he was preparing for TNL, so he couldn't hang around long. Just wanted to say hi or hello, feller. And we're all saying hello back, Ken. Well, and sorry we missed you, Ken. Ron on his one thousand subscribers. So if you ever get a chance, drop by Ron Brown's channel, Ken Heron, and say congratulations. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> we, and with all that being said, we've been, okay, there's a reason this happens because we have an, an, another business and at this time of day, we get called for rides for our other clients that need to have rides. So that's why you hear towards the end of the show a lot of times ringing <laughs> because it has to ring twice before we really know who it is. So that's an explanation. So just to let you know. And Ken said hello. Oh, I see Donnie's in here. I didn't even. Why did that happen? Donnie's not been online for hey. a while. Hey, Donnie, what's going on, man? Yeah, I see. Yeah, so I'm glad that you came in, Ken. 
He's elbow deep in editing. See you tomorrow night. All right, we'll do our best to get in there. And so like Ken was saying, please drop by Thursday night live tomorrow night. If you have a chance, uh, uh, he is going to always, as usual, put on a good show. We're, we're trying to do something. We've been, we've actually probably surpassed it tonight. I just hadn't had a chance to watch. Um, but here in the next couple of weeks, uh, since Bill's not here right now, um, we have been talking about doing something that we talked about called the drone table. And it is something to do with something that you all feel is an important issue in the drone community, whether it be, you know, flying around airports or, you know, what age limits should be as to, you know, what, when you get a pilot's license or, you know, get your license, you know, whatever it might be. And we decided that we wouldn't let people know when we were going to do it, but we would either be like a certain amount of people in the room or someone might say a particular phrase and that would set off the drone table. But we wanted it to be something that was special and something that meant that when we discussed it, even though if it got heated or people got upset with each other, that that was okay because it was something that was so important to the drone community that we really needed to bring it out in a public forum and share it with each other so that we can work out ways and methods to remedy all of it. Kind of like, you know, where we've had all these ridiculous things going on around airports that we're not even for sure if drones or not, but drones are getting the blame for it. So what are we going to do to fix that? That might be an issue for a drone, you know, drone table. And that way we could have everybody's input as much as possible. We might even post the, the actual link for the live stream in the chat to get four or five people in the chat with us. And like I said, even I, I don't care if I get dislikes over the con over the subject matter, as long as it does the community a whole overall, I don't care. I'm not worried about dislikes, likes, whatever. I'm just thinking that we need to figure out ways to defend our space as pilots, because I've said this a million times and Dan and everybody else has pointed out too. Amazon's coming, Pizza Hut's coming, and they're going to want our airspace. And it's going to be everything we got to do to protect our yeah. airspace and keep them out of that space, as, or, or at least give us our room. Yeah, it's a really tough, it's a really tough thing. And it, it, people want to talk about it, but everyone has a different opinion, <clears throat> uh, obviously. I've, uh, the, the, I did a video on just my feelings on the FAA reauthorization act back in, I think it was October or something like that. And wow, the engagement on that video was incredible. Everyone's got all these ideas. Nobody can really figure out anything that's perfect yet. Um, but the truth of the matter is that not enough people are really talking about that's the stuff. Not and, all point. We need to and, have little and, things like that. You know, I had people on that, vi uh, the premise of my video, this was before the whole reauthorization act had been passed, because honestly, I'd only heard about it that particular week. And the entire premise of my video is that this is going to pass. And I had a whole bunch of people saying, no, it's not, no, it's not, no, it's not. Well, okay, guess what it did? It happened under everybody's noses. And that's because we don't have anybody at the table to talk for us. We really don't. So that's what I'm saying. Is, is big business going to take our air? I want to mention there is a group out there that is trying to work on this. Um, it's a, it's more of an FPV oriented group. They call themselves the FPV Freedom Coalition. Coalition. You can look them up on Facebook. They uh, are always looking for anybody who's good with legal issues they document things they've got all sorts of documentation they actually have a reauthorization act rolling um a, a, a breathing document they call it. i'm gonna go ahead and link it here for you guys they update that as they get information so that they can break things down in i guess so they understand what the new rules are so that's the google doc to that the fpv freedom coalition um, manages and basically their goal is to just have everyone try to come up with something sensible and figure out what that's going to be and also to be a face in the media for people uh, we really like I said we really don't have anybody to speak for us right now and I know Rotor Riot 
is definitely working on trying to improve the image of drones in the media as of this year because it's it after this after the holidays things are really bad i feel like things are really bad because all anyone has seen in the news is oh drones caused whole airports to be shut down and the worst part about it is that as ron knows a lot of it was fake news like the drone at newark right i mean w was that ever even seen no, no, no right? none, none of these drone incidents, the one in England, the one in New York, none of them, they've never confirmed that there was nope. ever a drone at any of these airports. No, and I also feel that, like, just the handling of it was horrendous at, like, Gatwick, for example. I don't understand why a whole airport needs to shut down and disrupt everybody's holiday travel because of one stupid drone, It, which is, that's a whole fake news story in and of itself. You know these these things are are ridiculous. <clears throat> so we also uh, need John, to ask ourselves. Somebody <laughs> said uh, drones are the new UFO. Yeah, it's almost like yeah. Every time, oh, it's drone, it's drone. <sighs> yeah, yeah. This is a really big problem. It's it's a really big problem. The the Newark Airport drone. Uh, they uh, they asked the pilots could have possibly been a paper bag, and the pilot said it it, it might have been a paper bag. Yeah, which Rather is terrible because, yeah, which is terrible because, unless they're absolutely one hundred percent sure, they shouldn't say something because then the news takes it, they run with it, and that's all anybody hears. And everyone at the airport is all probably on their phones, and they're like, "Oh my god, a drone is stopping me from flying." Well, you John, know, where, where I think this is all gone, well, I don't think I don't know if they'll get there, but I think what what they want to push for is all drones that have some sort of a chip in them that they can be seen by like an air traffic controller or, or, or law enforcement. They'll be able to see the, the drones in the air because it has a, it has an onboard chip. Now, I mean, a DJI will jump on that and, you know, but I don't, but obviously the toy drone makers like SEMA won't have these chips in them. Well, right. Like so they would like all of our drones to have something called RFID that yes, will broadcast where you are. And so the FAA can pick that up. In my opinion, that is completely unnecessary for people who fly FPV drones. Most of us stay under 100 feet, so there shouldn't be any reason for any planes to be coming where people like us are flying FPV. That they, they, they should not be there, period, end of story. So, you know, this whole, this is another issue too. There is no one size fits all. Everybody needs to be considered, and people forget that too. Well, remember we were talking about that once before about how that they had come up with a semi-decent plan. They were going to say like uh, commercial drones were going to get like uh, 200 to 300 feet. And then we were going to get like 300 to 400 feet or vice versa. Somewhere in that area. I also wanted to point out that Ted 10 had uh, talking about fear tactics. They the only bad thing about that is the negative. The, the thing about it is, is the thing about the news industry that they know people tend to watch negative news stories more than positive. You know, it's people will always say, Oh, how when they see the puppy at the end. But if you start with the puppy, people don't watch it that much. But if you show the car crash, everybody wants to. Let's see. David was saying, "Oh, the mainstream media always make fake news about drones over here in Australia as well." <clears throat> I've heard. I've heard. Maybe you can clarify this, David. I've heard that in Australia, um, video evidence of what you do with a drone can really like get you in trouble. Whereas it seems like in the United States, if you post a video, unless it's one hundred percent clear. Uh, the FAA doesn't necessarily act on it. So I've heard that there are a lot of people in Australia who are afraid to post certain things because there are so many rules over there. I don't know if that's true or not. Is that true that the the, that the Australian drone police are, are really trying to clip people on YouTube and in Facebook? I mean, we had, we had one person who was really adamant that our group changed from public back to close because he was scared that even though he didn't do anything wrong in our eyes he was breaking australia australia's laws <clears throat> hey john while we're while you're waiting for a response there um 
how how far out do you think we are to um you know drones delivering packages for amazon and the ups and bill said pizza hut are we five years away from that happening 10 years uh what do you what do you see as a timeline on on that i mean not i mean when i say happy i know it happens in these simulated areas but i mean mainstream how long do you think before drones will be delivering packages and pizza to our houses if I had to guess, honestly, I would say 10 years minimum because we just don't have the battery technology right now. That's really what's holding it up. I think right. if we had the battery tech, it would be already up. These guys are planning for at least a decade, I think, yeah. to to do it. Well, John, I, I think the first step will be because, the like you said, the battery technology, what will happen is like the UPS truck will pull into your development, say a sub development that has a hundred houses and they'll have drones in the UPS truck and they'll only have to fly to deliver the packages in the sub development and then come back to the truck and then recharge again for the next giant sub development. And, and that'll speed up the process a little bit from flying directly from the UPS depot to somebody's house. Tom Brown, I think you've really? watched Ready Player One one too many times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so unfortunately, it looks like David just confirmed what I was saying, that yes, the Australian drone police are hot on people's cases. So apparently you have to be really careful what you do in Australia because it's going to get you in trouble. So, so okay, so it's kind of like even worse than Canada and Australia, or as bad. In Canada, it's practically illegal to fly a drone because uh, if you fly over wildlife, you could be flying over an ant, and it would technically be illegal. <laughs> they don't have any good distinctions at all. Pretty much putting the thing in the air uh, where there could be any wild life. Oh, that's what it was. I remember what we had read that that what it was going to be was commercial drones and uh, consumer <laughs> drones were going to share the same airspace. It was going to be like like streets that like a hundred feet was going to be north south, two hundred feet was going to be uh, east west, you know, and then you know at three hundred feet was going to be whatever, whatever, you know. That's what it was, yeah. but. It might be simpler though to do because they could actually program the commercial drones to stay in a particular flight range. Yeah, look, these guys are thinking way down the road. They're thinking 10 years, 20 years ahead, but they know that they have to strike now, not later on. The earlier you start on this stuff, the better. And there's really no better time for these companies to start than now where it's still kind of the wild west let's be honest it still is kind of the wild west we do have the regulations but um that was a good question ron ron asked dave he said have you ever been approached by a police officer he and has I, I, I let him tell a story well he had, he has a video where a security guard um came up to him but uh yeah i've i've seen a video where a policeman approached him but he he I'm, has been approached by security I was watching a video somewhere where it was a legal 107 pilot that was actually taking video that he'd been hired to do. And some tenant in the rental house, uh, the, the apartment complex was hassling him. And even went as far as to call the cops and the dude walked up and said, here's my 107 credentials. You know, here's the job I'm working on. And he ran the pedestrian off. He's like, get out of here. And he even got that, back started that. giving him a hard time. And the cop should go. Leave. <laughs> well, he, I bailed it. Time, he said, do you realize if you harass this man, once he has notified you that he is an, a licensed FAA pilot, that you have to walk away. If you harass him, I can take you to jail. And the gentleman walked off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's what you have to do when you're yeah. stuck in a situation like that. Or you just have to back up and go if uh -huh. you're not doing it for a job because, man, the cops can just make your life miserable for no reason. Uh -huh. It sucks, but it's the truth. I mean, <clears throat> even if it's my right and I'm not doing anything wrong, if a police officer was ever to tell me, get the hell out of here, if he was really on my case, I probably wouldn't push the issue. Yeah. <clears throat> well, Bill, I have but a story from... Push out. It's not fair. 
I have a story from like two summers ago um, when it's, I I just got my spark. I had I haven't had it a month yet. So I'm down at the at the Jersey Shore, flying in a town called Ventnor, where they started building mm-hmm. these uh, controversial dunes that nobody wanted. So I mean, it was like the, almost I, the first day. This is almost the first day they're building dunes, right? So I, so my wife says, "Let's go down and check this out." So I said, "Let me take the spark down with me." So I, I'm and they got security guards all around these guys doing his work, and they work 24 hours a day. I'm down there around dusk, so I get spark out. I'm flying around taking videos, right? I'm thinking how this security guard is probably going to come over and tell me I can't fly. I didn't fly over the dune construction. I just flew around it, you know, like I even flew mm-hmm. over the ocean mm-hmm. filming it, but I was filming it, and and. The, and the cigar never said anything to me. He almost looked at me and just watched it fly. And I was thinking, you know what? This guy thinks I'm flying a toy drone down here. He doesn't realize this has like an HD camera on it. And I'm getting this high quality video. Um, he thinks I'm flying like a, a X5 around here. And he doesn't care. So the next day, like I post a video on Facebook. And, and a guy runs like the local like Down Beach Buzz down there, which is like kind of their news they don't have a newspaper, but their news website. He calls you up and says, "Can I use the video?" And he he voices over it. And, you know, he m- makes a real political statement. So my video is all over the news. You know, and this guy, the security guy, didn't probably didn't even thought I was flying like a little seaman around. Didn't realize I was like getting this high quality video of this big project. So sometimes it's better to have a little looking a little toy looking drone because you're going to get hassled less by security guards and policemen if you bring out a big phantom and whatever and you got this big case and this giant controller and it's 100 right absolutely and that's a, that's a funny story yeah people underestimate the spark because <laughs> well, until the, I, think, it, I think that within the next like john was saying within the next 10 years that we'll all have something like this size like our phones and it'll be like a personal assistant that just flies along with us and you can get video. I was watching too much Ready Player One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wishful thinking. Yeah. Wishful thinking. All right, guys. Well, it's pushing seven o'clock, and I, my wife needs right. to get in the We need to wrap this up. So, uh, well, but yeah, I'm glad to have everyone here, and I'm glad, really, really grateful for everyone in the chat. And we're definitely going to try to do this again. I'm getting off because my wife needs to go downstairs and do some stuff. And I need to watch and hang, keep an eye on my daughter too. So that's kind of why we're getting off right now. And okay. I'm very grateful. And I will pass it to John Coopy so that he can say his good evenings. And then John, you can pass it to Ron and Ron will throw it back to me. John. All right. Good evening, guys. It's been fun. I really enjoyed talking with you. I apologize again because I pretty much have no voice left after this. Still getting old for cold. But uh, it was great sharing FPV stuff with you guys, and um, maybe we'll do this again sometime. And I'm going to pass it to uh, Ron. Ron now. Thank you, John, and uh, thanks for uh, being on the show tonight and offering all the uh, knowledge you have on FPV flying. You were a big addition to the show tonight. And I'm, to just wrap this up fast, I just want to thank – Everybody in the chat room, and we had, you know, we've had a lot of talk and conversation and questions. So it's good to see everybody active in there. So um, with that note, I'm going to throw it back to Bill Thomas for for the final thoughts. Okay, and I am very grateful. I, I I can see there's a lot of interest in FPV, so I think this will be the first of many hopeful, fulfilling, and and educational FPV shows. But in the meantime, I would really like everyone to pay attention to some announcements coming from this channel this week as we have already confirmed with someone for next week. We just got to button down some things and we'll announce when. But we're going to have a special guest next week. Bill the Drone Reviewer announced on his show last week that it's someone very, very well known in the drone community. And he has graciously accepted our invitation to come on the show and talk with us about FPV and a variety of different drones. So please keep an eye out for an announcement probably in the next few days, maybe this weekend. Hopefully not this weekend. Hopefully the next few days. And with that being said, thank you very much. Live long and prosper. Good night.